Hi, everybody. Welcome to week nine of our quarantine, where we're sending out these devotions a couple times a week, opening up the Bible and seeing how God would have us respond during times like this, uh, seeing how our faith informs us uh, during seasons of life and, and how our faith can, can make a difference right now. Uh, you know, it is, it is during uncertain times that God tends to get a little more attention than he normally gets. And I, I think that's certainly true with what's happening right now uh, in our world. And, and even though we're kind of settled into some new realities and maybe that it, the initial wave of fear is over and has been replaced by frustration, uh, either way, regardless of whether you are you feeling more on the fear side or the frustration side or, or both of them at once or something else, uh, during uncertainty, and that's really where we're at right now. And I think we can be honest; that's where we are all the time. We we don't know the future. We don't we don't know uh, what's going to happen later today or tomorrow. Everything's uncertain. So during times of uncertainty, God tends to get a little bit more attention, a little bit more focus than He normally does. And if you're paying attention to some of the, the studies and, and results of surveys that are coming in right now, uh, that is certainly the case of what's happening. Uh, people are more in tune with you know, spiritual practices and, and issues of faith now than ever before. And you know, yesterday we, we, in the sermon, we talked about prayer and we started talking about uh, you know, praying for a number of weeks. We're going to be talking about that in the, in the Sermon on the Mount as we walk through the Lord's Prayer. You know, but right now, um, you, prayer is one of the most Googled thing, the, the things that, that's happening right now. I mean, it's, it's profound. In fact, even last week, there were some celebrities that you know, were laying this out and kind of you know, slamming it that people are, are Googling how to pray uh, more so. Why would you know, people do that? Well, it's because that we're in a time of uncertainty. And people are coming to the realization that I think I need to learn how to pray. Or I need to learn how to pray better uh, because of all the uncertainty that's happening around me, I want to trust in a, a God who is constant, who is certain. And I want to be able to address him and talk to him in right ways. And and again, in, in God's good sovereignty, that that's what we're doing right now on Sundays as well, as we continue walking through the Sermon on the Mountain in Matthew 6. But I want to take a couple of minutes today, and I, I want us just to talk about this idea a little bit. And we'll continue it on Wednesday as well, uh, that it's during times like this, God gets our focus uh, so, for example, uh, January 15th of 2009, uh, U.S. Airways Flight 1549 uh, took off from LaGuardia Airport in New York and just a little bit after takeoff hit a flock of geese and because of that had catastrophic engine failure. And they eventually had to ditch the plane in the Hudson River. They couldn't make it back to any of the airports, had, had to land it in the Hudson. And the story became quite famous and was made into a movie. Tom Hanks played the pilot, uh, Sully. And they began to refer to this as the miracle on the Hudson because, again, they landed this plane with no engine power at all in a river. There was very few injuries. It was an incredible story. The, the pilots were able to maneuver and save everybody. And it, it became this famous story, and rightly so. And right after all of this went down, there were a bunch of interviews being done of you know, people in the plane, all the passengers, and, and certainly the pilots who became quite famous after all of this. And in one CNN interview, they were interviewing the pilots. And one of the questions they asked was, so as all of this is happening, as you're trying to maneuver the plane and land it in a, in a river, what are the passengers doing? You know, what was happening in uh, the, the, the rest of the plane? And the answer was very simple and matter of fact. The pilot said, well, they were praying. I bet they were. Uh, they're getting ready to experience a plane crash. Uh, I bet they were praying a lot. Uh, in fact, if you've ever been on a plane that flew into a storm or that had really terrible turbulence, um, you know how spiritual you are in that moment. Um, it, you are you are more focused on God than you have been in a long time. You are holier in that time than you were in previous years combined. Um, you're, you're praying to God with an intensity you hadn't had before. You're going through the list of everybody in your mind. You're forgiving everybody you need to forgive, and and you love everybody because 
Why is that? I mean, you're like untemptable in that moment. I mean, Satan himself could show up on the plane and tempt you with the greatest thing you've ever desired, and you would refuse in that moment. Again, you're holier and more spiritual then than you have been in so long. Why is that? Because you're in a very uncertain situation. You are not in control. You're on a plane that you're not flying. You don't even know how to fly. You're not in control of that. There's a storm. You're not in control of that. So what do you do? You focus on a God who is certain. And, and during these seasons where things are so uncertain, whether that be health-wise, you know, with a, a virus and all of that, regardless of how you feel about the seriousness of that virus or the economic challenges, uh, that are already here and are just going to get worse the, the longer this thing goes and you know, the, the uncertainty that's going to come because of your job or financial picture. You know, what if someone you know gets sick? What if they lose their job? That on top of all of the other stresses of a normal life, uh, all the normal things that you deal with with your family and you know, your spouse, your kids, extended family, aging parents, you know, all the normal stresses of life. We now have these other major things added on top. Well, what's our response? Do we let it crush us? Well, no. No. Yes, it's a, a time of uncertainty. But again, we can admit life's always uncertain. That really hasn't changed. Just how we're feeling about it has changed a bit. But the fact that life is uncertain hasn't changed at all. So we focus instead on a God who is certain. Uh, no matter what's happening, we go to the Bible. We don't listen to... Uh, you know, the political pundits, we don't listen to uh, the news anchors, we, we don't listen to what's happening on social media, you know, people's opinion, they, those things don't matter, because they change, you know, the winds of change are everywhere, uh, with what people are thinking and saying and believing. So instead, we go to that, which is certain that which is unchangeable. Because again, during times of uncertainty, that's what we want. We want that foundation of certainty. And friends, only God and his word can provide that for us. So, for example, Romans chapter 8, verse 28, that incredible verse that, uh, that we go to a lot. And even in these devos we've talked about before. But let's just talk about it for a minute today. And then on Wednesday, we'll, we'll dovetail off of it. The, you know, Romans 8, 28, we know. I mean, what a, what a great statement of certainty. And we know, not we feel not we wish, we know that God works all things together for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. We know. We are certain of this fact. Why? Because God's unchanging word tells us so. And I think our experiences back that up. We've seen God work. We've seen him maneuver things together in his sovereignty. He's working all things. And that's an important phrase, all things. So the job loss, the relational problem, uh, he left, she left, the scholarship tanked, this friend is doing whatever, all of those things. God is working in all of them for our good. What an incredible promise. Notice it, it's, it's not for uh, what we want. It's not for how we wish it would happen. But that which is best for us, that which is for the good of his people. So God is sovereignly orchestrating, working behind the scenes, maneuvering everything to the purpose of his glory and our good. And what an incredible promise that is uh, that we trust in. Friends, that's our certainty. We know that right now in the midst of all this, in this very, very moment, no matter what you're you know, fearing, no matter what you're frustrated about, no matter all the stresses you might have, no matter the level of uncertainty right now, we know because God's unchanging character and his unchanging word have guaranteed it to be so. We know that God works in all things for the good of his people. How incredible is that? How peace giving is that? Now, and the question I want us to deal with on Wednesday is what do we do in the meantime? We know God's doing this right now. He's at work. Well, you know, while it's in process, when we're not seeing those tangible results, when we're not uh, you know, seeing the, the, the results of that, that, hey, God's done this. Look at what God did. Wow, look at how it all worked out. And I'm so grateful. 
it, as it's in process, when we're still dealing with fear and frustration, what do we do in the meantime? Well, the Bible addresses that as well. We'll talk about that on Wednesday. But right now, let's simply focus on this truth. We know that God is at work for our good. What an incredibly hope-giving, peace-producing promise. We know God is at work in this very moment. So I hope that's encouraging. I hope that's beneficial to you. Uh, we love you. We miss you. Hope to see you again very soon. We'll be back on Wednesday to continue to talk about what it is that we do in the meantime. And as we're dealing with all of this, we focus on what we know. God bless.